Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to demonstrate how I create an injection style bait using an open pour style mold. And here I'm going to use the Yamatanuki as an example. Yamatanuki by Yamamoto Baits is a newish bait that everyone is talking about. It resembles a Japanese raccoon dog called Tanuki. Yama means mountain and Yama in Yama Tanuki is just the branding or there are actually mountain Tanukis, I don't know. So anyways, it's a very simple bait to build. I'm not going to get into too much detail. I'm using it as an example because it's a simple design and the concept in this video might not work for complicated designs. And also because this is other people's design, I do not plan to share the file used in this video, so please do not ask for it. Now for the mold box, as usual, first we draw a rectangle and then extrude that to a box big enough to cover the entire model. And then we split that in half. Next, we will subtract out the model from the box to form the cavity on both sides. There is a small hook slot piece that was cut out when we create the top part of the mold. Remember to combine that to the bottom part of the mold. Now we have the top and bottom parts of the mold. Uh, if we were going to make an injection mold, we will make the sprue and also the registration uh, parts. But we are not going to do that here. The idea here is to open pour the bottom molds and overfill it. And to prevent the overrun, we will need to build a box around the bottom part. When we pour the plastisol, we overfill the bottom cavity the outer wall will capture the overfilled plastisol. And next, we push the top mold into the box. The plastisol should fill the entire cavity. And the extra plastisol will need to escape through some path. They are like venting, but they need to be bigger because they are not for air, but for plastisol. To do that, we need to find the highest point in the cavity locally and open the holes at those locations. Now let's look at the cross-section analysis. And as you can see, those escape path is locating at the highest point inside the cavity locally. I also added a couple of wells to capture the escaped plastisol. I only show one here. Now the whole thing looks like a traditional sand casting mold. The only thing different is, traditionally, we pour the melted iron through the sprue holes and here we are pouring the plastic salt to the bottom mold only and then push the top mold into the box. The key point here is, with this mold, we don't need an injector to make the bait anymore. So I did a round of pouring and something bad happened. As I mentioned earlier, the top layers didn't look like they were printed properly. And after a round of hot plastisol pouring pressing, as you can see, the surface got damaged badly. So I was saying the bait making process with this mold is like making a waffle. 
And now the mold really looks like a waffle maker. I try to save this mold by adding the aluminum foil to the surface. Let's see if it works. Alright, the mold time. I try to clamp it down as best as I can, but I still got some flashing. The hook slot looks okay, and I got some dent on top. So I think I need to pour at the lower temperature. I was pouring at 300 ish. I think I should uh, reduce it down to uh, 290 or 280. Although it looks like the aluminum fix was holding up okay, but I think the seal was compromised. Because that did not have the flashing in the first round, so I think I need to reprint the mold and adjust the top layer counts in the slicer. And here is what it looks like after cleaning up. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it should work. And I have to say it gives a special jiggle action. Maybe that's why the fish like it. So I tried several different riggings and here's the wacky rig. For the Texas rig, make sure to use white gap hooks and the hook point can be exposed during the bite. And here's the shaky head. I think this is my favorite rigging for the Yamatanuki style bait. And as you can see, the tail is uh, shaking in a unique way. And I don't need to work too hard to uh, create this action. So with this, I think you just throw it out and uh, let it sit. And once in a while, work it a little bit and fish should go crazy. So it's not surprising the homemade Yama Tanuki works. It does live up to its hype. The point here is we create this bait without an injector and I think this technique can be used in any simple injection style bait. Please subscribe and like. I will see you next time. Yeah.